Hi, welcome to Rockdown. I'm Wendy Stapleton. Well, a couple of months ago, we had an episode uh, discussing the uh, closure of venues in Melbourne. But it's not just Melbourne that it's happening to, it's happening all over Australia because of noise restrictions and building um, com uh, complaints from pe people in uh, new apartments that have been built close to hotels. And tonight we thought that we'd pick up, re-pick up that issue and also uh, discuss a couple of issues that are risen with uh, APRA and uh, PPCA uh, royalties. So here tonight to join me, our producer Anita Monk. Hi, Wen. <laughs> and everything tall and gorgeous, Mr. Bobby Valentine. Good evening, viewers. Good evening, How are Good you? evening Anita. Good evening, Bob. Nice to see you again. Long time no see. Me. That's all right. Well, any time. <laughs> well, <laughs> sort of any, sort of any time. Um, <laughs> I'll start with you. Anita? I, I started Mike, I think I talked about Mike the last time, which was Musicians Independent Collective, which uh, I tried to get people to join, to giving us a voice, and uh, I started writing to APRA. Now, APRA collect money from businesses who play music, whether it be that, whether they've got a television or whether they've got live music or whether they're playing a radio or CDs. So this is um, shops... Hotels, bars, everywhere that you walk into and there's music being played, APRA collects a fee so that you can play that music. Which is a great idea. Which is a great idea. That money gets collected by APRA and that's good because then it gets paid to songwriters for having their stuff played in a public arena. And we, well, I have no problem with APRA. But I did talk to APRA a lot because I don't like the way that the money is distributed amongst Australian songwriters. There, has, there was a law passed with the, what was it again, Bob, the trade, the trade. Oh, no good at law. Oh, it was no. the trade, part of the trade agreement in the last budget, I think, that Australian content on, commu on commercial radio need only be 25%. So that means that out of all the money that's collected out of licence fees, only 25% needs to stay in Australia. The other 75% gets paid to overseas artists. artists. Yes. So 25% has to be Australian. So the record, big record companies who are all we have now since Mushroom was sold off need to sign 25% more or less Australian in uh, Australian musicians to, to keep that 25%. And they tried to drop it down to 0%, which means that nobody needs to be signed in Australia ever. The problem is that Australian businesses are paying this money to APRA. Now, I've got two radio shows, or three. Bob's got one on Southern FM. And these are community radio stations. These are community. And we all try to play at least 60 70% Australian content because there's a lot of Australian bands out there and they're all independent. They won't get played on commercial radio or commercial television because they're independent. They're not signed to the record companies. And they're great music. Aren't they? I mean, Australia's always written fantastic music. Community radio only pays 10% of their advertising budget to APRA. And that adds up to be 3% of the total APRA money. And that's the only amount that will come back to musicians that are played on community radio. Does that make sense? They'll only pay back the 3% that they get. So that goes to specific people and not very many. So as you can imagine, there's not much money there. Out of the total budget of in 2011, payable in royalties from APRA, which was $146 million. Mm -hmm. So a very large percent of the money that's paid, it's almost like Australian businesses are just there to pay the record companies and pay overseas artists. It doesn't make sense. It's like Australian artists aren't getting a fair deal at all. Does that all make sense? It does. Um, the thing is that I'm presuming that per, 
per rata, per, per artist, yeah. that it's all being distributed. So basically the, the gripe yes. is that you don't feel that uh, Australian artists are seeing the benefit of, of these, these collections? Absolutely. Uh, well, can I just say, for example, and it's not even just Australian artists, if, you've got, if you own a Chinese food shop and you play Chinese music, the money that you pay in royalties to APRA won't go to the Chinese people. It only goes to the people that have played the most on commercial radio. So if you play Chinese music, the money will go to pink. So also you're saying that, for, for example, if you were to run a boutique and you're not necessarily playing any songs that are on um, a radio playlist, yep. a commercial radio yeah. playlist, that you're not necessarily going to receive a payment for your music being played in that shop, no, even though no, the people that are no. running the boutique are paying APRA yeah. a fee. Yeah, I say, okay, I'm running this little shop and I've got Wendy's song and I play Wendy's CD all day. You're not going to give me any money. Especially if you're independent, you won't get any money. So, so is there any governing body that is overlooking the way that the, the fees are distributed? <laughs> I don't think the government's ever really had anything to do with the music the, industry. The, the main problem, what, what you're getting around, and from my own experience with APRA, the, the main thing is the reporting. Uh, yes. You use the example of, of a restaurant or, or a bar. They don't make a list of what they play in the night. They wouldn't have a clue. They put an iPod on or something like that, and they let they let it run. They would not even know what's playing. Mm. Um, when, when we do... Uh, a, a, a live performance, we fill out, um, I've just done it, you do like once you a year, once every two, once or twice a year or something, you do what's called your live performance return, your LPR, and you you write um, what you've performed. If, if you're really diligent, you keep a song list of, of what you've played each night, and <clears throat> and then at the end of the, the year, you, you fill out an app perform, and basically what you report is what you get returned on. Mm. But... Getting back to what you're talking about is the fact, and and there's one great example of a pub in South Melbourne that was getting a bit cross with with um, APRA and PPCA about what they about the price hikes. Yeah. And he said to his, and they only have DJs in the place, by the way. But he said to his DJs, "I want you to record, I want you to write down every song that you play, and then we're going, and then I want you to research which of those is independent and which are actually owned." And governed by APRA and PPCA, and I will pay <clears throat> APRA and PPCA a percent a percentage according to that actual list. I, I think it was in the paper. The nightclubs were starting to jack up about it, saying we're we're only going to play independent Australian mm. music. We want some money for them, and they all jacked up about it. So um, they are now going to have reporting from nightclubs. So that's a step. It is a step. So, so okay, let's let's talk about what can be done. Is there some solution, or what 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 are we sort of talking about that can be done in a positive way here to correct what you see as an injustice toward our local musos and songwriters? When APRA first started, we had Australian record companies, and uh, there was a lot. I mean, imagine the record ban in in the seventies when when um, the record, big record companies, their stuff wasn't being played on the radio. So it was mostly Australian stuff. So that was fantastic. And that worked really well for the Australian musicians. And, but there were a lot of Australian subsidiaries, like EMI had, a, had an Australian subsidiary and, and uh, W&G back in those days. That's and Astor, right. they all had Australian yeah. branches that were, that were independent within the company. So the money so stayed, a lot of the money stayed in <clears> Australia. <throat> but, but do you see any, do you see any uh, obvious solution to the problem? Yes, if, we need to have independent music played on commercial radio. Independent, there's nothing wrong with it. So we need your support. So get off the couch, turn the telly off. No, turn the telly off. Get off the couch, go out and support <laughs> live music. And also be very vocal. Ring up your radio stations. Contact uh, all of these organisations that are trying to do uh, a lot for uh, Australian music. And we're going to take a short break. Be back soon. Rock Down. Welcome back to Rock Down. I'm with Anita Monk and Bobby Valentine, and we're having a deep and meaningful tonight 
uh, discussing um, all things to do with the Australian music industry. We need lots of phone calls either to uh, Bobby. All the bodies and all the bodies. Uh, all the bodies and your politicians. It's very important coming up at the end of this month with uh, the, all the local councils and being re-elected. Re-elected, that's correct. Uh, October the 27th is the day. I've, it's amazing. I've never been interested. Like, I've always slept in on a Saturday and paid the $50 fine for not, you know, not having to vote. You bad boy. A bad boy. A big, there, there was never any point because councils just come and went, mm. came and went, and nothing changed. And, and all of a sudden, it was the St Kilda Triangle that sort of turned everything around for me where I realised how how much incompetence and corruption there was um, and and how little regard there was for what the community actually needed. That's what started it. And this and the, the music issues have been a, an on, on go, or have rolled on from that from for that, me. Yeah. And to the point where uh, this this coming election is very, very important for us. It's it's I was talking to somebody the other day and it's got to the point I lost my Sunday gig as as it's been pretty widely publicised that my little humble little Sunday afternoon session at the Great Provider in St Kilda got closed down because of a noise complaint. Shouldn't have kicked her cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cat was the least of our worries. But, um, but, uh, and, and things have just sort of snowballed from that because as, as a result of the publicity that I got for that, a lot of um, people have sort of come to me with their own stories and... and you know, we've been talking to venue owners and, and all that sort of stuff and councillors have, have been coming and going and politicians have been ringing me up. And this and is not just St Kilda, this is all, it's every, all it's areas. All, it's yeah. all over Australia. Having said that, the other states, um, it makes a mockery of, of the legendary status of Melbourne as the entertainment capital of Australia nice. because it couldn't be further from the truth. Brisbane's got... Um, an entertainment precinct, Fortitude Valley, is now exempt from noise complaints. You move into Fortitude Valley, you move in for fun. You know, Sydney's got two areas. I'm not sure. Kings Cross is obviously one of them, and there's another one, which uh, I'm not sure of the exact location. But there's two designated areas. Adelaide's got one, Hindley Street. So you would imagine St Kilda would be right up there with moving to St, St. St Kilda. Well, have fun. Melbourne should technically have three or four because mm. there's there's St Kilda probably number one. Brunswick, north, Fitzroy, of, yeah. north of the, yeah. the Yarra area, or um, the Fair Go for Live people sort of look after that, where the toad is, Collingwood, you know, all of that mm -hmm. area. Uh, arguably North Melbourne. Um, north Melbourne is probably a bit of a victim. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the Chapel Street area. Yep. Probably no brainers when you think about it. Mm -hmm. But it has to start somewhere. It and, has and to now start somewhere. Time. That's exactly it. That's, that's the, the bottom line. And the time couldn't be better with the elections coming up. So you've got a you've got a chance to go to like we're having a big rally for St Kilda Live Mid. Not a rally; it's actually an expo. Um, we, we're doing a Sunday. Uh, Southern FM will be doing a, an OB from the from the uh, Memo Hall in St Kilda, and uh, and musicians will be playing. There'll be live performance on stage. We're even setting up booths where musicians can have uh, can play their songs. You can sit in the booth and talk to them about their songwriting and all that sort of stuff. And I've got to say, as an addendum to that, it's been an incredible journey of discovery for me getting involved in this because um, we, we did, we launched the Prince uh, front bar, reopened like after fifty forty thousand dollars $40,000 worth of renovations and soundproofing and stuff. <clears throat> and... Um, and they're putting live bands in there again for the first time in about 10 years, which is a really Fantastic. It's a great thing. It's a really positive thing. Now what we need, the bands are there, the venues are starting to have a go again. We need governance to get off our back and let us operate, and we need people to start coming to gigs again. As you said, turn off the telly, except for Rockdown. Yeah. Watch Rockdown and then go out <laughs> after it. But, well, that's what, that's what they used to do in Hey Hey Days. Yeah. Yeah. It's about tolerance, and it's about... Tolerating people that live in your area with you in your community. Mm -hmm. So, so the word is respect. There, there is no respect. There's no respect in the music industry and, anymore. And we have to, we have to reestablish that. Yeah. Look, I mean, you know, I've just been on an extensive trip around the world, and, and yes, seen, we heard about, that. <laughs> <laughs> and seen, seen incredible things. You know, in terms of the respect factor, particularly mm. with live music. Um, People, 
in, in six weeks away through France, UK, uh, America, I never saw one TV in a bar. No, that's a lie. If there was a TV in a bar... It was an Australian bar. It was an Australian ah. <laughs> bar. No, no, in New York, they, they always have baseball playing and yeah, no yeah. one watches it. <laughs> but if there was a band playing, the TV would be turned off. Mm-hmm. But in England, and unless you're in a like a public bar or a sports bar or something like that, there were TVs. But well, here, here you have to actually play with the screen behind, behind you. you. Yeah. Yes. And, and don't we remember that at Fitzroy? Oh. Football club, Wendy Stable. <laughs> she got the mads and started chasing the footy on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> she would. Could I she see would. it? She, she would. Did. <laughs> Could but I see that, But there's that respect factor. And we, we're in one particular um, a fantastic little restaurant in London, um, and a mate of mine was playing, and the band was really loud. You know, and it was a, a, a diner sitting there, and I'm sitting at the bar thinking, oh, this is bad. You know, they're going to get in trouble for this. And the band finished their first song. And everybody put down their knives and forks and clapped. I went, oh, I wasn't expecting that, you know. And then they played another couple of songs and then I thought, oh, this, this can't go on. And then the manager walked over to the bandstand and went, oh, this is it, he's going to tell him to turn down. He went and requested another song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, how long's this been going on? This is fantastic. Oh my God. In France, they have, the government has a, has a, a special, it's not called this, it's got a special name, it's a subsidy, it's called, they call it the Museau's Dole. And it's, it's a subsidy to subsidise their income for when they have hard times. Well, there you go. The thing is, it sounds like we're having a good old gripe, which we are. Mm. But the thing is that uh, it's art. And when you consider that most other sectors, even though I, I must admit people in uh, theatre and people like the, uh, the arts mm. are, are also complaining about the way that they're treated in Australia, but the thing is that we are entitled to complain about that because, as Bob's pointed out, most other countries in the world actually look after their artists, mm. and we're not. We're not. We're going to take a short break. Be back soon. Rock down. Well, welcome back to Rock Down tonight. We're calling it Have Your Say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with our producer, Anita Monk, and Mr. Bobby Valentine, and we have been having a good old oh yeah, winch, a good old gripe about things that are that we think should be corrected, and the only way it can be fixed up is with your help, your support. So uh, we're discussing all things important to do with... We're talking about musos tonight, but in actual fact, this runs through generally through a lot of the arts community because uh, uh, generally it's not really, really considered too important. Can I can I just go back a, a couple of steps you here, certainly Wendy? can. I was going to talk, the, I'm going back to the APRA thing and hopefully you've uh, had time to digest everything I talked in the first um, segment. segment. But there is another license agency called the PPCA. If you have, if you have a venue that plays music, you have to pay two licences. You have to pay for TAPRA you have to pay for PPCA. And I've written, I read here what it says. The APRA license, APRA provides licenses covering the copyright in the song, lyrics, composition, and represents the interests of composers and publishers. Absolutely fine. PPCA, which has been going since 1969, I read today, provides licenses covering the recording and all music video of the song, a particular recorded performance, and represents the interests of recording artists and record labels. Uh, uh, PPCA is run by the heads of the large record companies. They're the people on the board, right? So what they've done is they've come to Australia and they've thought, I want some money here. It's like to me, and I was thinking of an analogy today, you've got a whole lot of wool growers in Australia and they sell wool to America. And so there are all these people making stuff out of Australian wool and it's fantastic and it's a good selling point because Australian wool's the best. The Australian wool boards goes, oh, I think might make some money out of this. Let's go over there and make people pay to be able to say we use Australian wool. You all have to pay a licence because you're using Australian wool and advertising it. I think the American businesses will jump up and down and say, go get lost. Yeah. But I don't know why... I don't know how this all came into 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 being, but you have a whole lot of Australian 
businesses paying money. Now, if um, PPCA ended up at the end of the year with $25 million to give out to the recording artists and record labels, they get 50%. So if they're going to give you $2 for playing your song in a shop, they get a dollar. So out of every $2, they get a dollar and you get a dollar. So it's really, to me, they've set up this thing so they can just earn a lot of money from Australian businesses. Because and they're collecting know, it from where? Same thing, shops and... so. There's a, couple of, there's a couple of points that need to be made there. One is that there's, amongst the, the venue operators, restaurateurs, etc., these are what we, we mentioned it before. They've been hit by incredible increases in their fees for APRA and PCA, PPCA. Um, so there's there's a perception amongst the people that we have to deal with, the, the venue operators and, and restaurateurs and shop owners and all that, that they're getting ripped off. And and that exactly what you what you're saying. The perception is that it's just money there to prop up the failing CD sales. And, yep. and that's yep. But the artists don't seem to be getting the money. Well, they, they don't. They, and well, not that. It, it, the same thing. It's it, it's paid. The money is paid to the people who have played the most on commercial radio and commercial well, television. You can, you can see. You know, you don't have to be very smart to to see at the moment our retail industry <laughs> is in dire straits. Mm. And they should learn from the record industry. Well, the thing is that also, can you see that it's not going to be long before some retailers will just say. Well, I'm waiting for I'll, some shops. Uh, I'll just do this. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm waiting for the, for the business and, to And they'll stop. It'll stop. I wish they'd all get together and say, I'm not paying this anymore. Okay, which leads me to my next point. Next right. point, this, this is the important thing with, with PPCA particularly. When they went, this uh, I asked somebody how this incredible, like in some cases it was a 1,000% increase in, mm. in a, an annual rate. It's a lot of money. Their revenue was up from $5.5 million. In, in now, I asked somebody how that could be so. Yes. And it went through a parliamentary committee or study mm -hmm. or some, one of the, you know, one of their things, one of their processes. The PPCA people got up and made their submission yes. and said, we need X amount of percent per dollar to, mm -hmm. to come to us. And there was nobody there to oppose it. Oh. And now everybody's up in arms going, this can't be true, this can't be happening to us. And it was what I, what I was saying to you before when off off uh, camera, we were talking about the apathy amongst the industry. Like it's it's one thing to to appeal to the people to say, you know, we need help you to come to, to gigs and we need you to vote, we need you to write. You've got to help yourself we're as well. We've got to help ourselves mm -hmm. and we're not. That's And that's a really important point. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm not setting myself up as St. Robert, but... <laughs> oh, that'd funny. be funny. Oh, that's, really, that's really funny. But but I've I've worked in a lot of organisations yeah. over the last ten years, starting with Support Act and then on from there. And with our own people, you're banging your head against the wall to try and get people to re reply to emails, to to become involved. Everybody pats you on the back and goes, "Great job, fantastic, what you're doing, really love it. Call me anytime." And they won't answer their phone. <laughs> and and look, all of those things have to be addressed, but they have to be addressed fairly, you know, and they have to be addressed with 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 respect and with tolerance, mm -hmm. and and that's what we should be working towards. Okay, so we're going to say thank you very much. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's discussion. Please show your support, and uh, as Anita and Bob said, uh, contact uh, Rockdown Music Victoria uh, Musicians Independent Collective. Musicians Independent Collective. So, look, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's discussion. It's a, it's an important issue for uh, not just musicians, for all arts collectively. So, on behalf of myself, Anita Monk, Bobby Valentine, aloha, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Aloha. See you next time. <laughs>